present him question. I said identify the business risk. And how it relates to the risk of material misplacement. Number two, can say identify or another word will be explained. Um, risk. of material misplacement of the company and the third part is identify or explain risk or this risk sorry and explain or this risk of the company and how the auditor may seek to address them. So these are, check through your passport. These are the only ways we can ask you questions about the audit risk. How do you tackle them? <laughs> How do you tackle them? Technique. The technique you need to adapt is to first of all, state your point, to state your point, about the risk, about the risk you have spotted. Then, the key to explain it, all right, explain the risk. So if you are dealing with identification of the business risk and how it relates to the risk of material statement. You identify the risk in the question and you will explain it. Now, instead of explanation, you tell us the resultant effect that it will relate to the risk of material statement. Now, whatever you are talking about or explaining, you have to explain it just from two angles, all right? The, the, so you have to explain from the angle of whether the thing will result in an overstatement of figures in the financial system or the risk Okay, to bring about an understatement. All right, understatement of figures in the financial system. Okay, so that is what you do. So once you spot the thing, you explain, you think that, oh, I've spotted so this rate, okay? So there is a risk of the company not being compliant, say to the tax law. And this will result in an understatement of provision as according to IAS 37, okay? So that is how you explain it. And it will also bring about under disclosure, all right? So you can use over, but, over statement of figures, under statement of figures, then under disclosure. Okay, so if the company is not compliant, it means that there is a likelihood that they will be fine. Okay, which once given the materiality level of their non compliance can affect the company, which is 
IAS1. So the growing concern might be affected. So it will result in under disclosure. So this is how there is an overstatement of figures, there is an understatement, there is under disclosure. Okay. And check when the question, when you get to so example, when you get questions that concern IFRS 5, for instance, uh, NCA held for sale and discontinued operation. Normally, it is about disclosure. Okay, so that is that you need to understand your reporting standard. So, this is the technique that you will use to answer an audit question. Now, bear in mind, like I said, if the question is just about business risk, all you need to do is to identify things that are bringing the company down in terms of finance, all right? Financial, are sales, are sales coming down? Okay. Are costs going up? Okay. Are liabilities going up? You remember ratios like asset test ratios and stuff. Are liabilities going up? Okay, such that there will be financial risk, bankruptcy risk. You look for those things in the question. Talk about operational. Are people leaving the company? So staff, we are talking about staff turnover. We are talking about uh, something like uh, machinery breakdown. Okay, so you need to spot these kind of things in the question. You need to spot it. If key people are leaving, it means that you are left with inexperienced people. And the way they will treat transactions in your financial statements can be affected. Okay, that is the link between the business risk and the risk of material misstatement. Talk about reputational damage. Now, if there is reputational damage, remember there can be impairment, all right? Things go down, everything go down, all right? So that is it, you need to be able to spot these areas. Now, when the question is about risk of material misstatement, then, you are looking at, like I said earlier, you are looking at inherent risk, inherent risk, which business risk we said here is part, a major part of it. Okay. Then you also have to talk about control risk. Control risk. What is about the internal control process that um Post risk. So internal control. Internal control. Okay, so that is what we are talking about. Now, the third angle, it means that you need to consider inherent risk. Inherent risk. Plus control risk. And you need to also talk about what the auditor is. So this is the technique to be perfect. All right, this is the technique. Now that said, let's look at this. And I need you to come along with your, uh, I told you that here in advance for this, we need your knowledge in financial reporting and corporate reporting. All the standards that you have learned, that is what we are saying. So in audit and assurance, it is purely knowledge based, less practicality and most of the time uh, students might have not done plenty standards but even there we test IAS2, uh, IAS16, all right, and all those uh, introductory ones. Here there are more to the standards so we come along with it. Now let me bring up a question so that it can help me identify some way. Okay so please this is the question format, these are your techniques to answer the question. Never state something without explaining, all right? Never, never. 
And if it, if the person use the this one or the TS, never forget to add the section rate. Okay, never forget. So you see here, I said that, and how the auditor may seek to address them. That is about the detection. Okay, so that's it. Let's look at this question. Uh, let's look at this. Let's I hope you can see my screen. So I will need you to first of all, find a place where the noise will not come lengthy. And let's look at this simple question and let's come out with a risk. All right. See, when we say all this risk, we are talking about possible risk here that can let the opinion of the auditor go wrong all right so let's look at this one so great is myself it's a company that sells, sells laptops computers to shops throughout accra then over a year ago the place paid 1 million Ghana CD for a five year exclusive right to sell the A69 model. It's a laptop, okay? In, or in the Accra market. Sales of the EK69 were excellent in the first few years or first few months, all right? First few months. But the sales has been falling down in the last few months, partly because of repeated technical faults, with most of its recent batch sold. Question is, what are the audit risks? What are the audit risks? Look at this question. This part is an interactive question. And I want you guys to come out with some risks you think some praise can be facing. And therefore, if you are an auditor, if you are applying a risk-based approach to audit, where should you be looking at? Okay, so come out with those things now. Where do you think they are likely to be risk? Where do you think they are likely to be risk? Okay, so uh, now looking at the last part, it says that the, the fall is as a result of partly uh, the repeated technical faults with uh, the most recent batch that was sold. And so I think uh, it's, a, it's a business risk. Okay, you are uh, which is a uh, business risk, which is uh, so I'm saying it is a business risk, which is but uh, basically stemming from the operations of the uh, of Tom Priest. Okay, so you have quoted an agreement, yes, okay. So in terms of answering in your expectation, so you don't just say there is an operational risk, you don't end it there. Like I said, spot the risk out. That is one. Number two, explain. And in terms of your explanation, state whether it will result in an overstatement or understatement or under disclosure. All right. And since this one is an audit risk then it means that you need to talk about something small about control and also talk about detection risk, okay? Because this one, audit risk, AR, <coughs> IR, CR, and DR. So you talk about audit risk because the question says audit risk, 
Okay, so like you said, uh, we are having a technical challenges, right? And that is their reputation coming down. And anytime you talk about reputation, one standard should come to play. So you spotted right. Okay. So how do we say it? How do we say it? Okay. So you said you can see risk. There is reputational damage. Okay, you use operation. You talked about operation. Okay, so so think this thing, well, I've already given you the key to uh, reputation. Because if your things are always faulty, yeah, it will give you bad reputation. All right. So I'll come to that. But I think let me let's pick out your let's pick out your operational issue. <laughs> There will be a personal issue. Yes, still. What can you say about the personal? I think somebody's hand is up. If can you use the screen? Uh, Alec, I don't get that. Uh, is it that you can't see my screen? Guys, can you see my screen? Uh, we can see, but the characters are too tiny. Oh, okay. So let me read it out so that you can see. You can. So it says some place is a company that sells lap, uh, laptop computers. Okay. To shop throughout. Just over a year, some place paid 1 million for five years, exclusive right to sell EK69 models. The sale of the EK69 were excellent for first few months, but the sale has been falling down in the family because of repeated sport. Okay, with the most recent battle. And so you spotted, you said there is operational issue. What can you say about the operational issue? So you don't just say operational issue. What can you say? What particular in this question can you bring out as operational issue? Yeah. Okay, so I said the question goes now. What do you look at? Okay, I'm just giving the general because of the, I mean, I'm just relating it to the passage. I'm giving not like as an answer an example. So, try and record, try and type it in the chat box. Okay, I'll read it. Your line is very bad, it's breaking. Okay. So you, you, can, you, can, you can actually say that, okay, risk associated in changes in technology must render the computer outmoded. That is very, very good. That is very, very good. From Mohammed. Yeah, that is very, very good. Like you can see. Yeah. Mohammed, which line do you use to come out with this? Which line in the question did you use to come out with this answer? Hello? Hello? Yeah, I'm, I'm not getting your question. It's not again. My network is not good. That's why I'm typing. What are you saying? I said, what line in this question did you use to your answer? Your answer is very good. But we just want to help people identify which line in the question. The first one, the first one, okay. is a computer that's a company that sells laptop computers. Okay. So whilst you are engaged in selling laptop computers, and it ha I can see it, it has an, a five-year exclusive right. Yeah. So within within the time frame, there can be changes in technology. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right, so that is it. So he spotted things in technology. The risk that change in technology might 
caught the laptop to be outmoded. All right. Okay. If it is outmoded, what will be the relationship of that to any overstatement or understatement or under disclosure? So if it will be outmoded, then we can say that what this thing can, I mean, what this thing can bring about is that which might cause, which might cause an overhaul or overvaluation, okay? Overvaluation in the segment of financial position. How can this happen? It is because if you, the machines are outmoded and they are carrying out at their carrying amount in your financial statement, it means that you be carrying a value that is over the real recoverable value of it. And that one, if you can reference. You can reference IAS 36, all right? You can reference. So there is a risk that they will be recording the current amount. It's not more than you can see your financial statement where, are, where actually their recoverable value, their recoverable value is actually below, all right? So that is, that is how you answer the question, okay? That is how you answer the question. What can the auditor do to deal with this say that the auditor might have to conduct an impairment test all right to record the assets as their recoverable so you add that okay auditor might have to conduct Substantive testing on impairment of the computer. All right, so this is how you state it. So we spotted the issue, okay, which is a smoothed uh, machine, and we link it to an over. There has to be that way, overstatement, understatement, over our under disclosure. It has to come. One of them has to come in your explanation. All right. As, according to IS 38, and this is what the auditor should do. All right. I can see something type. Um, okay. Uh, this is from our this constituted is revenue as still begin to fall. The company might not be able to meet their operational cost and therefore run into a loss. Yes, it is true. It is true. And the fact that we said so we say this one that okay, you know that if they will be suffering losses, then it means that it is going to affect their going concern. And that one might come into play with IAS1. Are you seeing it? To affect yes. Their, they consistently make losses. It will affect their going content. All right. So that is that is how you answer it. All right. That is how you answer it. And therefore, lead to under disclosure. Under disclosure as the IAS one. All right. So you need to add. All right. So Malik is saying that the reliability of the use of the computer. If the computer tends to be faulty, it still should be affected. Exactly. And if sales is affected, then it means profit will be affected. Okay. And that one will might lead to an understate under disclosure of the going concern of the entity. So that is how you are putting. So, like I said, there is no way you should answer this question without saying this word overstated, overstated, understated, under disclosure. Don't omit these things. Okay. I always tell my students when I'm teaching for this. It's like the, those days I had the opportunity to mark pre-technical skills exam. Okay? 
those with the marketing tree say that whenever you see the students write design and make design and make the same thing applies to what is if I don't see in your answering under fake under disclosure overstatement it means that you are not getting anywhere all right so state your point explain your point in terms of whether it is leading to an understatement overstatement under disclosure all right and if it is audit rate then it means you have to add something small about what the auditor needs to do um, to try and detect those kind of rates all right so that is that so typically in this question I really appreciate what you guys are coming out with. It is very, very important. So it's in this paper, the technique is as important as the knowledge. Yes, any question? Another thing you can also spot. So Phil, so operational, uh, operational issue leading to the faultiness of the uh, machine can cause reputational, all right? So reputational risk, all right? Which is the fitness of, and that one link it with IAS1. So you can say it will need to disclose that. Disclose that, all right? Okay, so that is that, that is that, okay. Maybe, uh, there is a risk that they will not disclose all these things. Okay. Now you can also see. I don't know what if you guys see what I see. Now. Yes. Uh, can we also send the uh, uh, what's the name? Uh, sales have been falling in the last two months. There will be a high inventory. Uh, uh, turnover. Is that high? What? All over. Inventory. Inventory sent over. Oh, okay. Yeah. So inventory. So as you be able to do inventory, so you can realize that they might be if the things are getting forty, which is one thing. All right, it's getting forty. So you can make, when you spot inventory, you can say that in the same way uh, the laptops can be recorded at their carrying amount, which will look to be higher than their recoverable value. In the same way, you have to also talk about the inventory. That, that as you said, okay. And so there is a, that the inventory too can be overstated. All right, inventory overstatement. Inventory overstatement. As the technical fault may bring about the same uh, uh, the net realizable value of the computers below their cost. Okay, because they are faulty, it will bring it below their cost. So here, IAS2 comes to play. Uh, IAS2 comes to play. So you need to link it to a particular standard in the in the FR or the CR. It's very important, guys. You, you need those knowledge. You need to link it. So if inventory is overstated, if they are carried at their carrying amount. The faultiness of the things can bring the thing down to their net realizable value. And if there is a risk in there, which will affect, which is material enough to affect the, the financial statement. Okay. So that is that. Now, you, you, so you have to take your time and read through. If they tell you that the thing is 1 million for five years, at least it, it should bring about something. It should bring something. You see, this, this five years thing that has been bought, the right that has been bought, it's an intangible asset. It's an intangible asset, okay? Which should be amortized over the five years, okay? Yeah, so this one, 
this one million should be capitalized as per IAS 38. It should be capitalized. Okay. And if you amortize it, it has a finite issue. Like if you amortize it, uh, it means that for that one year, the carrying amount of the asset will be uh, if it is. Four hundred thousand pounds. You are left with uh, zero point two million or eight hundred thousand. All right. So you can spot and say that because the because the asset is losing its value, it can cause the purchase tangible impact. Okay, and there is a risk that they might not spot it, leading to an overstatement in the value of the intangible asset. Okay, it's good you spotted the, the fall in sales, which, which is an evidence that uh, uh, the, the right that we bought will be impaired. Okay, so you talk about IAS 36. Please link it to the standard. You talk about your over, under, and under disclosure, all right? Link it, link it, it's very important. It's very, 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 very important. You guys have done so great. So uh, the question you saw in the past question of November 2021, if you read it, uh, Mohammed, can you, can you try with this kind of technique that we, we said here? So that is that. We'll be covering all those past questions anyway. So, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to group all the past questions and the ethics and professional. I'm going to deal with them. I'm going to group all the uh, past questions and the audit planning, uh, audit uh, assignment, and I want to deal with them. Then we go to uh, audit report to deal with them. Then we do the public sector. All right. So, that is how it is going to be. I hope you have appreciated this thing. Yes, please. So the technique is very, very important. The technique is very, very important. Now, uh, in the next five minutes, uh, before we end today, so try using this kind of knowledge. But in the next five minutes before I go, let me ask you this question. Okay, help me with this. Okay, menu. Okay, menu. A highly expected people in the oil and gas industry are. Resign. Oh, at K and G Petroleum alongside the C R. Why? Identify. And explain A and G petroleum. My state. Yes, quick one. Quick one. What can you identify? Let's close out with this. What can you identify? Yes, guys, you have just three minutes. What can you identify? Yes, unstable prices. Okay, okay. 
So uh, uh, this one was the first one, right? So loss of key staff. Yeah. So you say loss of key staff. Yes. Uh huh. So what is the link? What is the link? What will it affect? Operational risk. That's an operational risk. Yes. Uh -huh. Affect the operation. Okay, and if it is affecting operation, then it is going to affect what? Going, going concern. Yeah. Going concern. IAS1, all right? And remember, you not use the technical term. Is there any over under, under disclosure? All right. So you talk about risk of under... What under is this? Under what? It's IS1, so under what? Yes, under what? Come on, guys. <coughs> so IS1 talks about presentation. And okay, and since you spotted going concern, then you have to talk about risk of under disclosure. Okay, how, how many times do you see company reporting in their financial statement that they've lost key staff? Do you, do you hear that? Do you hear? Do you see those things in their notes or in their report? you don't it's always a risk of under disclosure so that is how you tackle the thing that is how you tackle the thing so auditor must conduct a fancy session or uh, gather evidence around the going concern of that so when we talk about audit evidence you will see that if you want uh, if you want to be talking about the evidence that you have to you, you experience that I'll talk about the I E A E I O U, the vowels. You will talk about this for audit evidence. So, guys, uh, this is how the as far as audit risk goes, this is how we tackle it. Okay. This stands for analytical procedure, inquiry. Inspection, observation, you for recalculation. You will treat that, don't worry. You will treat that. Okay. All right. So we will meet again and we will tackle all this.